Depending on the clinical presentation, your questions may need to evaluate the structural and functional integrity of the heart as well as the arterial, venous and lymphatic circulatory systems. Remember that chest pain may originate from any of the structures found within the thorax, including the heart, lungs and mediastinal contents. Pain can also radiate into the thoracic cavity from extrathoracic structures or from the thoracic wall itself. For referring structures located superior to the thorax, consider the cervical spine, the thoracic inlet and associated musculoligamentous structures. Also consider referral from the thoracic spine, the ribs, their articulations posteriorly and anteriorly, and associated musculature. For referring structures located inferior to the thorax, consider the stomach, the gallbladder and the diaphragm. In this section, we are concerned with two functionally related structures, the heart and the vessels. Let us briefly review common signs and symptoms and their distribution patterns. Symptoms from the heart tend to have a characteristic referral pattern which involves the precordium, the sides of the neck and up to the jaw, and the arms, particularly their medial aspects. The referral symptoms are more dominant on the left side, but depending on the severity of cardiac pain, the right side may also be affected. Common heart conditions include coronary artery disease manifesting as angina or myocardial infarction, diseases of the valves, arrhythmias and conduction disturbances, rheumatic heart disease, infectious diseases, cardiac failure and congenital defects. Let us now consider some common vascular pain patterns. Aortic aneurysms will radiate the pain deep within the thorax or abdomen depending on the location of the lesion and to the adjacent parts of the spine. It is often described as pulsating or tearing. If the lesion involves the common iliac arteries or if it is near their bifurcation, in addition to lumbar pain, these symptoms may also radiate into the iliac fossae or groins. In atherosclerotic arteries, if blood supply distal to the lesion is significantly reduced, the patient may report muscle cramps, the limb may be cold, and if the condition is long-standing, there may be visible trophic changes to the tissues. Large atherosclerotic arteries, like the carotids and the renals, if occlusion is significant, may produce a bruit. This rhythmic, whooshing-like sound is heard on auscultation generated by turbulent blood flow. For pathologies of the vascular systems, we need to consider the arteries, veins and lymphatic vessels. Common conditions include for the arterial system, hypertensive-related changes, atherosclerosis and arteriosclerosis, aneurysms, peripheral arterial disease, thromboembolytic disease, and the various vasculitides or inflammatory vessel disease. For the venous system, consider thromboembolytic disease, varicose veins and deep vein thrombosis, thrombongitis and thrombophlebitis, and chronic venous insufficiency. Conditions affecting the lymphatic system include inflammatory disease such as lymphangitis and lymphadenitis, lymphadenopathies and neoplastic involvement, surgical removal of lymph nodes, parasitic infections, and lymphedema, commonly a secondary manifestation of the conditions already mentioned. We will now cover some essential case history questions that are system oriented. You will need to do this if the patient has presented with pre-diagnosed cardiovascular condition. You may also follow this line of inquiry if you have deduced from the nature of the presenting complaint that they may be suffering from a condition affecting the earlier mentioned structures. Does the patient suffer from chest pain? If so, 
ascertain its position, character, severity, duration, and radiating patterns. Are there any associated symptoms like nausea, sweating, or palpitations? Identify any triggers or aggravating factors. Any shortness of breath or dyspnea? If so, find out how much exertion is required to bring on the symptoms. For example, the distance walked or stairs climbed. Does the patient wake up at night with shortness of breath, indicating paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea or cardiac asthma? Does the patient suffer from orthopnea, that is breathing discomfort when lying flat? Has the patient reported the presence of palpitations? If so, remember that this term is used freely to refer to a diverse variety of chest symptoms. Clarify whether the patient means simple awareness of their heartbeat or changes to their regularity, frequency or intensity of their heartbeat. Has the patient experienced any abnormal heart rhythm, regular or irregular? If so, are there any other associated manifestations when the irregularity occurs? Has the patient noticed any ankle swelling or varicose veins? Does the patient suffer from vascular claudication? If the lower limbs are involved, this manifests as pain or cramps affecting the calf muscles when walking. Has the patient had any dizziness, blackouts or faints? Does the patient suffer from cold or blue extremities, possibly indicating peripheral vascular disease? Or do they suffer from Raynaud's disease? Is the patient a diabetic? Inquire about any previous history of blood clots, heart attacks, high blood pressure or rheumatic fever. Red flags relating to the cardiovascular system include angina not relieved by rest or medication. This also includes irregular angina patterns as in elderly females and diabetics. Abnormally severe chest pain and angina radiate into the jaw or to the arms. Dyspnea, hemoptysis, that is the coughing of blood, malignant hypertension, or the opposite, very low blood pressure. Abnormally cool, sweaty, or moist upper back. Edema, cyanosis, whether central or acute peripheral, painful, hot, swollen calf muscles, rapid trophic changes to the skin, copious frothy sputum with or without blood, and previous history of heart disease or stroke.